I'll obviously practice that one, but I will show you anytime you're loading or uh, unloading, you should always get in that good, solid stance. Okay, anytime we're gonna shoot this thing. Our stance, here's the thing that I advocate, that we advocated out for, okay? Uh, there's all kinds of stances that exist out there. You have, you know, a weaver, which is elbow down, this one locked out. Uh, does everybody understand their right eye, their dominant eye dominant side? Okay, so we gotta get through that. What you're gonna do is, is you have the weaver stance. This is what people taught forever, okay? Here. I don't advocate the weaver one because uh, they're, they're, they're now showing that if you're presented with a threat, Nine times out of ten, you end up in an isosceles position. I, I, you have what's called the OODA loop. You've ever heard of the OODA loop? You've probably heard of it. No? OODA loop works like this. Okay, it's like reaction. Okay, you have, uh, you have to first observe the threat. So I find a threat, an explosion, whatever goes on. I have to first observe the threat, and then you orient to the threat. Naturally, we orient to it. We turn and go. We look at. It. We naturally square off to whatever that is. We decide what we're gonna do, and then we act. That happens with everything. So you observe, you orient, you decide, and you act. That's the ODA loop, and that's the problem, because we have to go through that, and that takes a certain amount of time. You know, depending on the situation, it can take somebody a nanosecond to do, or it can take another guy a full second to do. Does that make sense? And so the idea is, is that when somebody's attacking me, they have already oriented, They've already observed what they want to do. Then there's no observed observation because they're not reacting. But ultimately, they've oriented it, they've decided, and now they're acting. So they're in that action portion, and I've got to go through, observe, orient, and decide before I can even. So that's why action is much faster than reaction. Does that make sense? So that being the case, we we observe, we orient, we decide, and we act. So it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to get in some crazy stance. You're going to basically square off. Fair enough. So. Naturally, we want to have our non-dominant hand forward. I do what's more called like what they call combat isosceles. A more modern isosceles is here, straight up. Both my hands are here. There's no cocked down hand here. I take a bladed stance because it's more like a fighting stance. Okay, so that's what we advocate here. But it's still considered the isosceles, the combat isosceles. It's good for police officers because I have the body armor in front of me, so it all works out. Does that make sense? So we have our stance. My shoulders are going to be way beyond shoulder width apart. I want a good, stable base, and that's just how it is. We're going to go. <gasps> We see something. We're going to orient to that threat, and we're going to drop our base. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I want you guys to start practicing, even when you're training, to deal with how you're normally going to deal with a threat. Okay? When I when we start giving up commands or threat commands or gun commands for you to fire from the holster, what I want you to do to begin with is I want you to, to get a flinch response. Okay? That's what's going to happen when you see something going. <gasps> somebody starts shooting at you. You're going to do a flinch, just a little flinch. You can roll your shoulders forward. You can duck your head down. You can do a flinch. Okay? So what I do is I have you go ahead and flinch. So every time, and you'll get in a position where you do here, it's, it becomes almost like Pavlov's response. When I flinch, I immediately will go to my pistol to draw and fire. Does that make sense? So we have our stance. 